Hey y'all, it's my review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, episode 14. So we left off in the last episode with NECA being crowned the new grand dame of Potomac. Clearly, Giselle was trying to get under Karen's skin. But then we see off to the side that Candace storms off to her room, saying she isn't about to be a part of this. And then, you know, of course, Wendy goes to check on her to see if she's okay. My thing is, when I saw this scene... Like, Candace, you should not give her that power to agitate you so much. And Karen, she was just going along with it. Like, oh, here go dusty-ass Giselle trying to come for me again. Like, Karen can handle herself. For you to be more angry than Karen, it just came off really weird to me. We see Wendy asking, is Candace okay? She just said she didn't want to be a part of this foolishness or trying to make fetch happen. So they go back to see her being crowned. And yeah, like, Karen is totally unfazed. Her and Nekka then skip arm in arm together as they're about to go play golf. We cut to Karen's confessional. She says she's not worried about Giselle whatsoever. She has this girl out here in a party city crown. It's not a crowning, it's a clowning. And then out of nowhere, Karen pulls out a clown mask and puts it on and says, this looks like Giselle, doesn't it? <laughs> A buck tooth clown mask at that. And at least she's in on the joke. Like, they both shade each other. They've been doing this since season one. So now that this glow-in-the-dark golf activity, and I'm just like, isn't it coincidence that they were playing golf on Married to Medicine the week before? Anywho, the topic of Giselle's current man comes up, and she clarifies that they're dating, but they're not exclusive. And it just seemed like just something fun she's having on the side. I'm glad she's not taking it seriously. Now what's interesting is, and thank you Mia for always asking the right questions. She says that she would be upset though if she saw him on social media with another girl. She says it's more so of a respect thing. And I'm just trying to put myself in that situation. And I'm like, well, I guess I would feel some type of way if this guy is flaunting someone on Instagram. Meanwhile, like, we're kicking it. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. What do y'all think? So then we see Karen take Candace to the side and just ask, like, what was the reason that she walked off? And Candace said because it was just petty BS. She didn't want to be a part of it. And then Karen tells her that the reason why Giselle takes jazz is because she has nothing else going on. And Candace agrees with her as she also insults Giselle. But I think Karen just wanted to get across to her that she shouldn't be more angry than she is about it. Because the shade was targeted at Karen, not Candace. It actually had nothing to do with Candace at all. So as ladies are about to go to dinner, Kiana, I think that's her name, she makes it known that she's feeling better. Candace then says, oh, well, yeah, how you doing? I know you were not feeling so great. And Kiana's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing. And we cut to her confessional, and she says, you know, she's disappointed that her friends, Candace and Wendy, didn't check up on her. Like, Giselle was the first one to do so. And I can see that. Like, if I'm going on a, a group trip, eight or nine ladies, I know two of them, and I was feeling like shit, and they didn't even go to my room to ask about me, to check on me. And then I see one of the girls that I just met check on me. I would feel some type of way. Wouldn't y'all? Now, not to the point of it being an issue to start an argument, but I'd just be like, damn. Like, just be something in the back of my head that I'll be thinking about. I know I said it in the last episode, but I love her confessional look. And she looks a little bit like Regina Hall to me. Now, see, this restaurant is a nice looking place. Like, where were these places when I was in DR? So the conversation at the table, Giselle is saying that her daughter just graduated. She's going off to FAMU in Florida. While she's talking about it, like we see glances between Wendy and Candace. It, it's just weird. And this is the second time Candace has let Giselle's existence not rattle her, but just like get a reaction out of her. And I'm like, why? We're only 15 minutes in the episode and this is twice. And I get it, y'all. Like, she don't fuck with her. But pay the bitch does. Like, why are we even, like, humoring this as she's talking about her kid? Like, you hate someone that bad to the point where anything they say or do that has nothing to do with you gets a reaction out of you? I just don't think Giselle is that important. Also, I want to know if y'all agree with their sentiments on Florida because they were talking about the state like it was Mississippi or Alabama. I guess it does depend on what part of Florida her kid is going to be in. 
I do think Giselle made a good point when she said, well, racism is everywhere. And she experienced it in Baltimore. So, you know, you can't really shield your child from not experiencing racism. Like, yes, Florida is a red state, but just because I'm in New York, that doesn't mean I haven't experienced racism. And I have multiple times. I also forgot to mention that Robin saw the glances that Candace and Wendy were giving each other. So we know this is going to be brought up later. So then later on, the topic is now the rumor that Karen brought up about Mia to everybody. Brought up by Giselle, of course. Giselle tries to point out that if she said a rumor like Karen did, then Karen would definitely be on a rampage. Giselle's trying to destroy families, etc. Well, Giselle, you actually have brought up nasty rumors that could have destroyed families. So I'm not seeing where you're going with this. And Karen says that y'all have come from my marriage time and time again. And she's done turning the other cheek or taking the high road. I mean, I'll allow it. I feel like almost everybody at that table has brought rumors up about somebody that they don't like on the cast. Karen brings up that she brought Mia into the group, which I guess means that Mia owes her loyalty. Mia asks her, why were you being disrespectful to my marriage if you don't want me to be disrespectful to yours? I'm thinking, how did we get here? Was it really because of Karen's uh, secondhand invite to Surrey County? Is that where it all started? Just because Mia said, I don't do secondhand invites. And then I think Karen said, you're the trick and then came for her marriage. My point is though, that it all started from something very petty. As Karen continues to let Mia know what time it is, she also says, you know, Mia, I'm human. I bleed. And Mia says, I know. That's why I haven't shared the real story. And Karen's like, you don't know my real story. Mia's like, you want to try it? Look, <laughs> Mia's saying that's why I'm a real friend. I haven't said the real story. For some reason, Karen did not want to call Mia's bluff. And I just thought that was very interesting. Karen surprisingly backs down a bit. And Mia said, yeah, I don't want to go that low. And Karen says, well, I don't do threats, Mia. And if you're going to continue to throw rumors out about me, I'm going to throw out rumors about you. Mia's like, well, I don't want that type of one-up relationship. Karen's like, well, good. Then I can move on. We can move on. That's why I was like, wait a minute, Karen. You <laughs> really? I'm just wondering, what does Mia have on Karen? I will say Mia is an unpredictable, loose cannon. You don't know what'll come out of her mouth. And I guess Karen don't want to try it. We cut to Wendy's confessional, and I agree with her. Mia is a pathological liar. So I don't think Karen should have backed down because no one believes a word coming out of Mia's mouth. So then after that, Kiana extends a thank you in front of the group to Giselle for coming in and checking on her while calling out Wendy and Candace for not checking on her, being that, you know, that's her girls. And, you know, they apologize and they actually receive it. So I'm glad it wasn't arguments amongst the dark-skinned girls because, oh my God, like we are already in the abyss. We don't need to go further. So the ladies all head back to the resort. They call it a night. Next scene, it is day two. They're all having breakfast downstairs. Karen, <laughs> the cheeks is out. I think that's the first time I've seen Karen's ass on here. Wow. I mean, she looks great. I'm just saying, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't. And then, of course, we see, you know, Giselle and Mia talking about the other night. I thought Giselle messy ass was going to try to find out what Mia didn't want to say against Karen, but, you know, she didn't. But then Mia is now antagonizing Karen, saying, oh, Lord and Master, since you brought me to the group, how can I serve you? Karen really doesn't let it phase her. She says she's in a happy place, and Mia then lies and says she is too. We then cut to Giselle's confessional, and it turns out that she also noticed that Candace and Wendy were kind of making faces while she was talking about her daughter. So now the ladies are all coming down to play a game. I think they're going to spend the next 20 minutes on this game. Uh, so the name of the game is called Answer the Damn Question, where they have buzzers out, they pull some questions, and if people think they're lying, they hit the buzzer. This could go either two ways, fun and messy, or a blowout argument. Ugh, of course it's sex questions. I'm not going over every question, just letting y'all know now. Okay, so surprisingly, it's going fun and messy. Like, the ladies are all interacting with each other. I mean, of course, outside the obvious, but you have Candace interacting with Ashley, like, Wendy and Robin interacting. It's fun and light. The episode gets tolerable when they at least pretend to like each other. 
So the only interesting sex question that stood out to me was the one Robin got about fetishes and talking about Juan and saying that he doesn't mind watching her with somebody. And then Candace asked, with a girl or a guy? And she said, it doesn't matter. Ooh, you just know Juan was mad at Robin for sharing that. <laughs> Of course, we cut to Karen's confessional where she stays on Robin's neck. She says she is not surprised by Juan's love of threesomes, and she knows that they do not include Robin. <laughs> I think we all know that. Some other interesting questions. Neka said that she would definitely fuck Juan. I think we all would, wouldn't we? And then Candace says she only has sex twice a week with Chris because she be tired. They're exhausted from each other in every scene. I can see two, actually. Karen then gets asked, how many sexual partners has she had in the last five years? This is a very messy question to a married woman. Karen then includes her wet dreams, and on that, we can fast forward. It's also noted that Karen did not answer that question. I'm sure her and Ray have an arrangement. So next scene, the ladies are headed to lunch, and side note, production is ruthless. Like, as ladies are getting out of the van, why would they zoom in on the sweat stain that Ashley left when she got up? Like, that is just foul. So the conversation starts out cordial, and I gotta give Robin credit. Like, she's facilitating a nice trip. I mean, not, you know, super luxurious, but I feel like they're all doing fun things. Ashley brings up to the ladies how she was talking about her sex life earlier and saying that it's still kind of awkward her talking about it while she's technically still married to Michael. But she is transparent about it and says the reason why it's so hard for her, I'm assuming to get divorced, is because she's never been on her own before. Mia then interjects and says, well, Michael is helping you out financially, so I can see why you'll remain married. Karen says, well, I hope that's half the reason. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Wendy then asks Mia, well, aren't you with Gordon for financial reasons? Mia says, no, Gordon is broke as hell. But Keanu's like, well, when you met him, he wasn't broke as hell. Mia says, yeah, he was broke as hell when I met him, and I had more money than him. All the ladies are looking at her with confusion, and I'm like, here she go, lying again. Like, girl, don't you remember you said that he used to spend 10 racks on you, like, more than once? Child, now she's talking about inheritance that she got. <laughs> They're all wondering, since when did you have inheritance? Inheritance from what? She can't even take herself seriously in her confessional when production is asking her about it. She's talking about cash and assets, and at that time, she had more cash in the bank than Gordon did. The look on Giselle's face and that bucket hat that she's wearing <laughs> is taking me out. And now she's trying to explain, oh, well, all high rollers ain't rich. I'm just like, girl, enough. Not Candace saying stripper heiresses. <laughs> when she's funny, she's funny. After that foolishness, they bring the topic back to Ashley and her insecurities of, like, if her businesses don't work out, like, how is she going to support herself? And just having Michael there is a safety net for her. So then even Candace is interacting with Ashley, and she says she's going to a confidence coach, not a life coach, and she's interested in singing again. And she said that she wrote down some lyrics, and now they want her to perform it at the table. So Ashley gets up and starts doing the chorus of this song that she wrote. She actually didn't sound that bad. I'll give it to her. I gotta say, though, this little chunk of the episode when they started at, like, the sex game and then to this lunch, it was a tolerable episode. Like, everyone was just pretending to get along. Child, we even see Candace uplifting Ashley in this moment as they're sitting next to each other. Wow! What is going on? Somewhere on Karen now and everyone's uplifting her about turning 60. She looks great. What show am I watching? And then we get to a little shady part when Karen's talking about her trainer, but she doesn't want to disclose who he is, which is really strange. And then as the ladies are trying to like guess like characteristics, Mia says, oh, does he have blue eyes? <laughs> See, like just fun, light shade. So now lunch is over and the ladies are headed to the beach. So again, they're all getting along now. Don't know what show I'm watching, but they're all doing like Sports Illustrated inspired photos. And you know, production just had to be wacky and get in on it. And everyone has their own shady magazine cover. 
So a little later, we see the ladies kind of separated. And on one side is Ashley, Mia, Robin, and Giselle. And Robin brings up the dinner last night where Giselle was talking about her daughter uh, going to Florida and just wondering did any of them realize the faces that Candace and Wendy were making to each other. Giselle says she definitely noticed. And Robin is saying just how it's fucked up. We're talking about someone's kids here and she didn't like it. Then we see Giselle going off. I'm talking about my daughter, you're gonna scrunch her face up? Get the fuck out of here. So then we see Wendy headed to their side and just blatantly asked them, what were y'all talking about? And it looks like Candace is already over there too. But the credits are rolling and that's where the episode ends. So I think we all knew the piece wouldn't last too long, but I do hope they're able to explain why did they make scrunched up faces when they're talking about her daughter going to Florida. And I do wonder, is Giselle gonna be rah-rah now that Wendy is in her face? Cause they make it seem like, oh, she ain't got nothing to say now, but she was saying all this to the other ladies. Uh, I would love to know what y'all think about that because I was just like, again, I just didn't think it was necessary, especially to be that obvious about it. Now I can see the two of them just giving a glance to each other, but the way production made it look like, they were just looking at each other like, mm-hmm, mm, mm. mm. <laughs> while Giselle was talking. And it just looked really over the top. So we'll see. With that, y'all, just a little disclaimer that, you know, just because I may have different opinions than you does not mean that you have to attack me. We can disagree respectfully. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you for the next episode, unfortunately. Bye.